tonight before we have a quick short break. Your next speaker, you got four stars in a fringe show. That's the same energy rating on my fridge. Please welcome to the stage, Rob Hunter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I love vegetables. <laughs> Stephen Hawking, Christopher Reeve. <laughs> but I love the cabbage. Mr. Voss would have you believe that an instant is more important than life. But I'm going to use this opportunity to disagree with that and show that Mr. Voss's speech much like the rose, lacks substance. <laughs> the topic of this debate could be interpreted metaphorically as a question of life versus art. <coughs> that the cabbage, the essential elements of society, are more important than artistic pursuits. But I intend to approach this topic from a different perspective. To look at the cabbage itself and to argue that even in a literal sense, it is better to plant a cabbage than a rose. So let's now look at the cabbage, shall we? Yes. <laughs> Rich in vitamin C and essential minerals. The cabbage is recognized around the world for its delicious taste and its healing properties. As the foundation of a tasty salad, as a dominant force in the world of lettuce impressions. <laughs> An unquestioned superfood. So much so that one of history's most noteworthy families relied exclusively on the plant for their entire dietary needs. For as Roald Dahl's documentary states, not only did the cabbage keep Charlie Bucket and his mother alive, but also four geriatric invalids. As Grandpa, as Grandpa Joe proved, when he finally got out of bed, they were incredibly healthy, just very lazy, like all disabled people who claim they cannot walk. <laughs> Even the word itself has power. 1939, the term kraut, German for cabbage, unites the world against a common enemy. <laughs> And did the Germans take offence? No. To them, it was a compliment, because they loved cabbage. <laughs> All of them except Hitler. And what did he do? He killed six million Jews. <laughs> so yes, he accomplished something. But without the cabbage, he didn't have the mega nutrients necessary to finish the job. <laughs> Albania. In Albania, Mark Tremlett's homeland. The cabbage is revered above all else. As the nation's number one export and tourist attraction. Are we to believe that Marcos would prefer to destroy the hallowed cabbage fields of his motherland in preference for a rose garden, thereby obliterating his entire race? Possibly. But only now because of the shame he must feel for his own hypocrisy. <laughs> the rose, better than a cabbage? Yeah. No. <laughs> for I would argue that a rose in any form has the power to offend humanity. Have you met Jared's mother, Rose? <laughs> Horrible skank of a woman. <laughs> Know, one doesn't know upon meeting her whether to say hello or to throw hay and attach some sort of carriage. <laughs> but in this case, ladies and gentlemen, Rose is merely a name, and to judge a person solely on this basis is a dangerous thing. For beauty, ladies and gentlemen, is in the eye of the beholder. Certainly in the eye of Jared's father, a very unchoosy man. <laughs> and 
just like I'm just like judging a person solely on the basis of their name or outward visage is a dangerously ignorant thing to do, so too is it ignorant to confine art in similarly restricted terms. Art is not limited to that which exists within the confines of a fancy building. Look around you. There is no such thing as a world without art. The world is art. It surrounds us eternally, in the smile of a newborn baby, in the sunset as watched by a newborn baby. <laughs> And in the cabbage that would allow the newborn baby to live rather than die choking on the rose thorn sandwiches the negative team would prefer to eat. <laughs> yes, a rose may be nice to look at from time to time, but if one cannot see the splendor and be inspired by the power of that which allows us to live, then truly the rose is wasted on that person. This is the person who needs art to be spelled out to them, who goes to an art gallery and looks at the name of the painter rather than the painting, who looks at the price tag before deciding whether or not something has artistic value, the mindless pawn who only sees the surface rather than true value. Better to plant a cabbage than a rose? I say plant a cabbage and the rose will reveal itself, for life is its own artistic reward. And art does not cease to exist purely because a dull person fails to acknowledge it. But let's stop procrastinating and dancing around the true issue of this debate. Are we seriously going to sit here and listen to a team filled with ethnics? <laughs> Australian Scott John, and good old Australian Rob Hunter, and good old Australian Jared Smith. <laughs> because we know what it's like to live in a country ravaged by drought, where something as externally simple as a drop of rain is so magical it has the emotive power to bring a grown man to his knees where the value of that which sustains life is not underestimated in preference for something aesthetically pleasing yet intrinsically useless. Yes, the rose, art, has its place in society. Nobody is saying it doesn't. And yes, the two can live together in harmony. But the cabbage must take priority. Yes, on a metaphorical level, of course it is better to live than to appreciate art. That much is certain. But do not make the mistake of reducing the cabbage to mere metaphorical symbol. Appreciate the cabbage for what it is. Sustainer of life, product of evolutionary perfection, potential cure for AIDS, and all round good health. <laughs> for the world is truly a wondrous place, and there is nothing more wonderful than a cabbage. Thank you.